If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, hoo yeah! For the first 48 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about our dirty summer jobs. Uh, ooh, I thought you were going to say Dirty Sanchez. Yeah, what weird. Kind of <laughs> weird direction. We talk about Adam's advantage in this contest. He injured his shoulder. Find out why it's an advantage for someone like Adam. We talked about my all-day workout update. It worked. I actually got stronger. Pretty crazy. Justin talks about sex with ghosts. Whoa. That's weird. Is that considered cheating? I, I don't think so. Uh, I think we talk okay. about <laughs> the, the surprising old name for pit bulls. Back in the day, pit bulls were not known as pit Sometimes, bulls. Sometimes, man, you come up with some random facts. That, that are true. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the new field of medicine that is emerging called nutritional psychiatry. That's exciting. Hmm. Uh, we talk about Four Sigmatics activated charcoal Lemonade, uh, great for detoxing the body. Great if you're going out drinking. Use that to help you prevent you from getting hangovers. That's that's what I say. That's not what they say, but it does yeah. work. No, that's um, a good point. We are partners with them. If you go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you will get a massive discount. This is the lemonade flavor one. At checkout. I'm excited to try this It's really good. Then we talked about relationships as a partnership. And Justin's big trip is coming up, which is kind of cool. Ooh, I'm so excited. It's very cool. We talked about FitAid for a second also. Listen, we got a hookup for you at FitAid. If you text Mind Pump to the number 474747, you'll get two cans of FitAid for 99 cents That's under a dollar. That's one word. One word, Mind Pump, and the text message is 474747. Thanks again to <laughs> Country Adam. <laughs> then we get into the questions. The first question was, Y'all come back now. How have Justin's kids' diets changed since, since switching to carnivore, yeah, so to switch, shoveling switch, those switch. steaks in there. Yeah, yeah. so their, their diets have changed as well. I don't think they're doing carnivore, but everybody's eating more high-quality meat. Now, we are sponsored by ButcherBox. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, we got an even better deal for you now. We actually negotiated something pretty awesome. Here's what you're going to get. Hmm. Free bacon. Yes, I like it. Two ribeyes. Even better. $10 off and free shipping off your first order. Jeez, yeah. you're gonna get, you don't of, get that. What is wrong with you? All kinds of free meat. Uh, then we get into the next question. The next question was, uh, how do you explain the benefits of weight training to old school martial artists who think, you know, if you lift weights, you're just going to get slow and muscle bound? Is lifting weights beneficial for people who want to perform better in martial arts, including the classical mm. martial arts? Boy, next, school me on some be Bruce, like wind. Yeah, school me on some Bruce Lee right here. That's right. The next question was: uh, Do we think that banned substances used by high achievers aren't actually bad, and the government just so, doesn't want normal people to become more awesome? Are they holding back the superhero serum? Is there a conspiracy going on with the government? Mm. Of course there is. You're talking. Nah, to, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, you're talking to Sal. No, a conspiracy. They're, they're super like uh, yeah. And the fall. And the final question was: What are the most beneficial habits? That all of us have imp have impl implemented. That's easy for me to say, into our daily routine. So we talk about the things that we do every single day that we've noticed uh, a lot of benefit from. Also, I'd like to mention this month, Maps Performance. This is actually believe it. Okay, Maps Performance is one of our most expensive uh, foundational Maps programs for good reason. It's quite unique. A lot of programming went into it. It is a functional athletic muscle building program with a mobility uh, focus. So if you want to move better, perform better, you want more stamina, speed, strength, and you want to look like a badass, Mass Performance is the program for you, and it's very different from traditional workouts. Now it's 50% off. We've cut the price in half, but you have to enter the code GREEN50, that's G-R-E-E-N, the number 50, no space, and you'll get 50% off at checkout at mindpumpmedia.com. We also have bundles available there. This is where we take multiple MAPS programs and put them together. We have a sexy athlete bundle. We have a build your butt bundle. And we have a super bundle. These are where we take all these programs and discount them for specific uh, needs or specific goals. All those bundles plus the 50% off MAPS performance uh, with the code GREEN50 is available at mindpumpmedia.com. Dot com, and I think we got a new YouTube video coming up. Uh, Adam, didn't you teach 
something new on there? Yeah, well, we did a whole series. The one that's dropping today that'll be up live is the only way you should be doing a flat dumbbell bench press. And these are just kind of like little tutorials with all the best cues that uh, I used to give to clients teaching. So it's uh, getting great feedback so far. And then hopefully going forward, what we'll start doing for you guys is on the podcast sharing what YouTube is, what YouTube video is going up live mm-hmm. so you know uh, what's trending currently right now because I know we put out so yeah. much content. And that's at Mind Pump TV. That's right. I'm so excited that I brought my boy to work today and we have a bunch of work for him to do. Yeah. I'm just so happy. He's in the back right now. I know. And he's doing a bunch of shipping for us. So he's just mundane, find the right shirt, Dude. put it in, close it, put the label on. I, I'm like, I asked him, I said, how many uh, how many shirts do you have to do? He's like, all these labels, a whole bunch of labels. <laughs> like, good. This is good. N- nothing makes you happier as a parent than watching your kid working. Like, Be- for your company. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. for your company. Yeah. I mean, because there's, there's two main reasons why I'm excited. Number one, it's free labor. Number two, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no, this is the real reason. Man, it teaches, it teaches kids uh, responsibility. It teaches them... Like how to like how to work and how to perform. Yeah. And I want him to learn with me, not with his at first real employer, because I could actually, you know, I'm gonna have a little more patience and stuff. But he's a good kid. He's I'm 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 real excited. But it's come on, yeah, dude. he'll be fine. And I was telling him earlier, I'm like, this is I'm like he didn't, he wasn't complaining or anything. I said, but man, when I was your age, when I was 13, <laughs> in the summer, my dad would wake me up at 5 a.m. Okay, so it's 5 a.m. in the summer. First of all, for 13 year old. Yeah. You might as well wake me up at 1 a.m., you yeah. know? You might as well not sleep at all. Yeah, because you Which just... I bet you there were some times where you did, because I did this too when I had to get up super early and work. I'm like, sometimes I'd be like, oh, shit, it's already midnight. Yeah. I'll just play video games for another four hours yeah. and go to work, oh, and then no. I'll sleep the next day. Oh, man. <laughs> no, what I would do is I would sleep in the work van on Great the way there. Idea. Yeah. So And you know what's funny about that? So so I'd wake he'd wake me up 5 a.m., and it was always the same way. Like Moms and dads, by the way, wake up their kids very differently. Oh, My yeah. mom would come in, Sal... Like lightly, yeah. like brush so, your arm. Wake up, honey. Yeah. Wake up, honey. It's time to get up. Yeah. Yeah. My dad just turns a light on, yeah. pulls the sheets off me. Let's go. And I got, it's like, I got five minutes. Oh, get shit. up. We're already late. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I get up and then I'd sit in the work van and I'd like nod off. And it, my dad used to love doing this with me. So I would sit, first I'd sit in the passenger side, but then we'd go pick up his helper because he would have a helper. So we'd have to drive somewhere. So then I would sit in the middle and he had a wood, it was a wood box that was in the middle of the two chairs in the front right. of the work van. And the work box, I mean, excuse me, the wood box served as a, like, that's where other tools were stored. But that was also my chair. Yeah. <laughs> a makeshift it Sounds hella chair. comfortable. And there was, it was a wood box. No seatbelts. Well, no. He actually had a rope that he, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that he made. Oh, that's that I, better. Yeah, I'd put it around, and that was my seatbelt, and sit there. And then I'd start nodding off. And then, oh, that's epic. And oh. then what my dad would do is he would, he'd, Slap you over he, No, he hit the he hit he pumped the brakes real hard. Give me like oh, wake up. jolt you. Yeah, and then they would laugh and That's shit. That's so was, funny. But I loved it because it was like I felt like it was one of the guys. That's but, even better. My dad would pick me so I I used to ride with my dad early. Same thing. Like we'd have to go over from San like from Santa Cruz to San Jose and we'd have to pick up one of his other employees and like so he had a truck. So I actually it had like a cab over it, so I had to go in the back, dude. Like this is back, you know, back when, you know, you could like kind of go sit in the back and there was a a tank of gasoline back there. <laughs> so I'm like sitting back there bumping all over the place and like huffing gasoline the whole time. He feels so bad about it. Now I always bring that up as like ammo. It's like I probably lost a lot of brain cells, you know, <laughs> all those years working for you. That's hilarious. But then we get to the job site. And my, and my job would be like, it's like 6 a.m. and it's freezing outside and I have to like spray like his tools down to get them wet because, you know, he, he would float floors and stuff like that or Sometimes we'd get there and he'd be like, okay, I want you to take all these boxes of tiles and I want you to put them on the third floor because we'd work on these mansions sometimes. So that was my job all day long. Mm-hmm. Pick up a box of tile, walk all the way up <laughs> the stairs. from here, put it over there. Oh, yeah. And sometimes he'd be like, okay, now we actually need some in this room over here. So can you move? So this is my job all day long was to do that kind of shit. Yeah. But, you know, it was a good time to hang out with my no, it's funny. There's something weird about that as a kid. You, you don't mind it. Like, I think that I think at the age that your boy is at right now, and then mm-hmm. what we were all at when that was happening is, you're wanting to become a man. Mm-hmm. There's this like there's like this natural thing that's in you that like I want to be an adult. I want to be a man. If that well, means, you want to contribute, right? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. what it is? I don't know what it was. Like yeah, I don't, like you, I don't know. Everybody kind of wants to be needed. 
you know and like it's that's the thing is like is you're working like you want to have like a responsibility like okay you have to do that oh cool yeah, yeah like i have something to do i knew i wanted money like i knew i wanted things because <laughs> we had video games and i didn't shit know that, that yet dude. yeah it took that, me a while oh i knew that because yeah. there was stuff that i wanted and i couldn't have and it was like if you want it you gotta go to work yeah. you gotta do stuff for us so it's like yeah. i'll I, get up at five in the morning if i have to i looked forward to lunch lunch was my favorite time not because it was a break but because me, my dad, and his helper, or the other guys that were working there, would all sit together, and then I would. They would because I'm a you know because I'm a boy, right? And I'm 13, and it's like the and especially because his workers were always in their 20s or whatever. I felt they kind of treated me like one of them, so I'd hear dirty jokes and whatever. And every once in a while, my dad would look at them, and I could tell he's telling them like, "All right, tone it down now, my you know my son." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, when he wasn't around, man, I heard the dirtiest joke, whatever. So I used to love that, you know. I used to love. Being in that environment, dirty jokes cool. were a big deal when we were a kid. I don't yeah. feel like they're a big deal anymore. Like I don't hear kid, I don't hear people share. Oh, they that. are, dude. Really? Yeah. My my son was. T- I can't remember what he told me yesterday, but oh wait, what did he say? Oh, it uh, has to be with how sensitive everybody is. Yeah, now. yeah I feel like, like oh, people have to be like whispering them now. Yeah, know? no, we had a lot of bad, sexist, racist, Bro, everything. Told, you oh, name uh, it. Like, oh, terrible yeah. jokes. My dad. I mean, my son just told me a joke yesterday. Uh, he said something like. Um, do you, uh, have you heard of the new like a disease or something called ligma? And I'm like, what? And he goes, ligma balls, and he starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's already started. Oh, it's beautiful. It's, ar- it's already started. That's a good so, one. Dude, one of the most miserable jobs I ever had uh, to do, balls, do with my dad. <laughs> I remember we used to, so my dad was a contractor. It was my stepfather, right? And so I've got to be about your boy's age or so. And I wanted to make some money. And he's like, he had this summer gig. And uh, he was to, so it was a new development. All these houses just got built. So we roll up to all these brand new houses. Nobody lives in them yet. They don't even have fences yet. And that's what we're here to do is to connect all these track homes, all the fences. And like, I'm looking down the row and there's, you know, like 20 houses straight down. He's like, son, we're going to build the fence for all these houses. And it's like, all right, cool, dad. You know, what does that entail? Like, I don't know at that age, right? And it's literally all, all you're doing is digging post holes and mixing cement. That's yeah. like literally the entire day. Like those two things have to be like two of the most miserable, like blue collar things that oh. you could possibly do. Yeah. Digging a post hole, especially like where we were at too, like just red clay dirt. Oh, it's like impossible. Oh, just break to, through. Oh, yeah. to break through. I mean, I myself, I would work on one post hole for like an hour just to get it to where we could get something, to get one post in it. Just yeah. to, then I'd go out to Dude, mix the roofing cement. Roofing and plumbing. Oh. Those are my two least favorite. Like yeah. In the summer heat and then oh, being under the, the house worst. and having shit, like human shit near you <laughs> is, is like not ideal. No, I didn't mind all. roofing as much. Roofing, I, I thought there was, some, there was something, my dad used to do this, man, it was so, I thought it was so impressive. He used to run across the house, like the beams. You know, there's gaps, you know, to, down, and he could just he could run across oh them. Oh my god! And then when oh, he roofers would, are like spiders, yeah. dude. dude. And then yeah. when he would lay, like it was, you know, he's teaching me how to nail right and how to do it properly and everything. It take me like, you know, six strokes to get it good, like to get to get a sink of nail all the way in to like, you know, start the the framing of the house or laying the plywood down on the on the roof. And he would grab uh, a fistful of nails like this, right? So there'd be like forty nails. And he does this tap sink tap sink, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it was just a, it was so fascinating. Like a machine. Oh, it was so cool to watch. Like it was it, the nail gun isn't that much faster than yeah. what what he could do. That's when sink you see in. skill in place. Like like every day, like doing the same thing, you get so efficient at it. So Dude, I used crazy. to I used to I, when I first went to when I first was you know started going to work with my dad. I was around. I, I think I was he started bringing me around nine years old, but I didn't really work. You know, nine years old, I'm just kind of hanging around. So he would do it occasionally, but. I don't think he brought me all the time because he had to kind of watch me, right? Because I'm nine years old. But thir- around 12 or 13, I'm actually paying attention. And I remember I had this image of my dad at the age of 12 and 13 where, you know, my dad has, a, he only went to up to second grade in school. He was, he was very poor growing up in Sicily. And so at, at the age of, right after second grade, he had to work and he had to make money and try and give it to his, his mom to help support the family. So I always thought of my dad as this very hardworking you know, strong dude that didn't that didn't know much. I always thought, oh, he doesn't know much because he didn't go to school. And I remember when I was 13 and my dad was doing this huge, like, fireplace. We were at, the, I don't remember where, where this house was. I think it was up in Atherton. And my dad had built himself a reputation in this country really early about, he was just a craftsman. He was really good. Mm. And remember, he'd been doing this kind of work since he was a child. So we, he, we were doing these huge walls and it was very intricate detail with the marble and stone and whatever. And they want these designs. 
And I remember watching him, and first he floats the, the whole wall, which, you know, that takes a lot of skill. But then when he's got it all floated, he takes the, uh, what's it called, the, the, the line with the chalk line? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting there, and he's doing the most complicated math that I, I'd ever seen, right? Up, especially up until that age still. And I'm, he's, doing, he's measuring everything out. He's doing all these complicated designs, and he's doing all this math. And I'm looking at my dad, and I'm like, how are you doing all this? And he goes, well, this is just math. i got to figure out where the full pieces are going to be, where the partial pieces are. He goes, you have to plan everything out before you lay it, especially when we're trying to do this complicated design. And then I realized, like, whoa, like, he he's he knows a lot of stuff. I didn't realize that until I saw him do that. Right. And, you know, to, after that, it was a whole different understanding of, you know, that kind of – that kind of work because up until then I thought it was just oh you're just working hard yeah right. but there's a lot of skill and stuff yeah, that goes into yeah, it there's a lot of skill yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool stuff so uh, Adam yeah let's talk about your shoulder bro oh dude come what's on what's going on uh, just so you can rub it in grumpy bears back you, man you know what dude? Ah, I'm you, in, you, in bad I, mood today I wish this didn't happen I'll tell you why not because you're injured and you're it's going to slow down your progress because I know how dangerous you are when you're an underdog. And this is just making you even more of an underdog. And now you got an injury on top of it, <laughs> you're going to be very motivated. I, I was like, oh, if everything's going good, he's going to fuck up here and there. Uh, now I know you're going to be- This is part of his strategy so we don't like hammer him so hard I, with our insults. You I know just mean? know, dude. I know yeah. now. He's Bring like, it, dude. Yeah, <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. I swear, sometimes like, I, I like, kick him when he's down. I'm just yeah, supposed just to be that guy, dude. Just, yeah. but that's not supposed, nothing's supposed to be easy, man. Nothing's supposed to be So what easy. happened exactly? You know, uh, I, I wish I could say exactly what happened. What I know is that I know that I was training back two days ago. And great work, had an incredible lift, such an incredible lift that I overreached probably. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't probably need to do as much as I did. And we talk about this on the show all the time that we're just as guilty of doing this as mm-hmm. the average Jane or Joe that we train. You know, I'm highly motivated. Oh, that's right. And you told me you were on the computer afterwards. Right. So th- the day before, I had lifted back, like, really. And I knew I was going to be sore afterwards. And I was kind of stretching that. I wanted to see, I wanted to kind of see where I was at. So I knew I was pushing my limits a little bit. And fine. I was totally safe. Didn't hurt anything. Mechanics all good. I wasn't like doing singles or anything crazy, but I was lifting heavy and a lot of volume, knowing that I'd probably be a little more sore than what I had been before. And I was. And I was, I was definitely feeling my back type, but totally fine. But, that in combination with it just so happens to be the next day we just got all our patio furniture patio furniture are all st- set up i've got our cool new felix gray glasses on i'm like i'm gonna just chill out on my patio smoke a joint and work for like six hours on the computer <laughs> so literally that's what i did i was just and i was in such a happy place dude i'm like in such a good mood like workout regimen's good i got my I had my chicken salad next to me i'm like i'm working and i was i must have sat there for six hours ho- chirping six yeah. hours <laughs> in like the same position just rounded shoulders and forward head and when i stopped and got up instantly i felt this like just pain in my shoulder and i was like oh and i tried to like posture all the way up and then it just felt this nagging pain and it just hasn't gone well yesterday when we went to go see brink you had some temporary relief and he took you through some pretty wild ranges of motion but it wasn't passive you were taking yourself through the right right which is good because it shows me I mean, obviously, we can see that you you have the range of motion. Right, I know so I'm not injured. Torn. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. I'm not. I know I'm not injured. I, it's what's crazy is it could be I am just that sore. I mean, I might have just got it that sore. And then you add into the next day that I did, I did uh, buys and tries, so my bicep got really tight. So I, everything just kind of over that's overlapping over the top of the shoulders, just I think pulling on it. And then you mm-hmm. add, add in the fact that I was sitting in that rounded position, and so I think I'm just an awful awful soreness that i've never felt before and it just it aches it's making the the actual Mm -hmm. shoulder ache like crazy right now i mean this right here you just gave me that i rubbed all over it it is at least giving me like oh that's what i smell yeah (laughs) it smells like the locker room yeah smell like the old like old man you know like getting ready for basketball it smells like did i ever tell you about the time my buddy (laughs) is uh he was uh, gonna have sex with his girlfriend, and uh, they were gonna do uh, butt sex. And uh, he was gonna, start, <laughs> yeah. he was gonna, he was gonna, he was gonna, he was gonna do anal with her. Oh, nice! And they were in the car, and it was dark. It was at night. You know, he's sneaking around because he's a teenager or whatever. And uh, Ooh, sneaky butt sex. He uh, he brought a tube of lube in his gym bag, but he also had a tube of something like that, which is for 
No, he did it. He did. Come no on, bro. Way. Sure did. This is an urban myth. No, this is for reals. Oh had, my they, god! They fucking r- ran to the hospital, like in their car, went in there, freaking out, oh and everybody god. found out what was going on. How embarrassing! Because he grabbed the wrong tube, squirted it on, started, and you know you're in that fucking that you know that that, and it was one of those. It wasn't super mentholy. It was one that you leave on, say, and then it wouldn't kicks you in. Smell the difference? No, no, no. It, kicks it in takes a while. Later. Even this one, yeah. like it, yeah. it, 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 that one took a good five minutes before it actually. It was set like in. Tiger Bomb oh, or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. And you know, luckily, I mean, it kicked in before he was ever to really go tiger hard. Bomb. Yeah, but he still got it on her, and of course, all over himself. And uh, he had <laughs> well, to. I'm sure they broke up after that. <laughs> bro, bro, you imagine telling That's that a to dick your, move. imagine trying to tell that to your parents. Yeah. On, I'm sure on the way there, he's constructing the I mean, most- the dad would understand. Yeah, the most elaborate <laughs> lie of all time. Like, yeah. what do I- uh, We slipped and fell. The dad's the like, no, that's why they have different <laughs> pockets, son. <laughs> like, son, yeah. listen, I made this mistake once. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here's what you're going to do. Yeah. Dude, that, that full day workout that I did, I swore to God it made me stronger. I swore to God. It, it's I'm I'm not. Well, you look the same. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, you know, I appreciate so that. <laughs> it's working. I took I took some pictures to because I know it, so I know you're lying. But no, I, I <laughs> no, I actually am stronger in the lifts that I did. Uh, that I, day. I, I, I'm serious, bro. I want to do it. Like, let's yeah, we're, we're I mean, gonna yeah, we're gonna do stop t- getting injured. Adam, right. You know I mean? no, no, no. I'm gonna be fine. I can already tell I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be okay. It's just gonna take a few days. It's just yeah. like you said. It's a small little setback, which I'm not trying to have right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. if it was any other week or whatever like that wouldn't be you're a big getting deal. set up for something that's the way i, I think something's yeah. te- you're getting tested in in in, in, in still all phys- still well <laughs> fuck dude, whatever you're, whatever you're supposed to learn hasn't been learned yet apparently you, you yeah. it's all physical you're stuff turn into a butterfly right? like uh, think about it, it's all this physical thing well you know? i mean let's be honest I and mean, i'm not saying you deserve it that's let, not what let's I'm saying. let's I'm saying let's me. be honest i mean there's no doubt in my mind that when we decided to do this it was not a, it would, I would never think about competing right now. Like I'm not in, I'm not, uh, my metabolism, my metabolism there, my volume of training See, bro, is he's there. Ta- he's talking shit. He's like, oh, it's easy though. It's just Alan and, and Justin. <laughs> that's exactly, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I thought. Subtle, You're subtle subtle Katrina. I'm like, she's like, you think you should be training yeah, like this he, right now? Nah, just playing with Lightweight, us. honey. Don't worry. <laughs> lightweight. lightweight. <laughs> I'm so is, glad this is recorded. This is, I'm going to play this clip. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, no, it, this would not, and but on on the real uh, take away my injuries bullshit excuses and and uh, hormone shit whatever but i think that there it, it is a microcosm of what a lot of people uh tend to make this m- same mistake yeah is they go they decide that hey work is going to do a challenge or hey we're going to do something and i want all right summer's around the corner and all of a sudden i want to just cut and get in shape and you know, cutting and getting in shape to most people means eating way less calories, mm-hmm. exercising a bunch more, maybe even running and doing all these things. And what mm-hmm. you don't realize is that you probably haven't primed and set the body up mm-hmm. to do that. Like you're just, how about getting like it all healthy first and really making sure that you have a thriving metabolism. You've got a, a substantial amount of volume that you built up so you can kind of ramp up and scale and your body can handle it. And I'm just wasn't in I wasn't in the most ideal place to head into a, a competition. And I'm competitive as fuck. Mm-hmm. So regardless of being in the optimal, I'm gonna still work around. It's, or work it's, that's it. why it's yeah. so important to always look at the big picture. Also, like okay, I have this important contest, but then the big picture is I want to be healthy. I want to feel good. I want to do things the right way because at the end of the day, what's more important, win the contest or you know, not injure yourself and do things the right way so it's it's a long-term strategy. Right. And I think people don't, they tend to get so caught, or they use the motivation of the contest as a way to get them where they think they want to be, but they got to remember that that contest will be over at some point. Right, right. And mm-hmm. now that you're like, you've tied all your, your motivation to that one thing, it's a it's a nasty way down. No, you know I mean? oh yeah, hundred percent. Although this in this case, I really, I mean, I openly admit that I overreached on training, but I mean, my back is just it's a little sore. It's not like that bad. What killed me was the sitting in the posture. Like that, I know for sure it was that. It was you know sitting- what this reminds me of? This is like, uh, do you guys remember Superman, the original Superman's? Do you remember? I think it was Superman. Was it Superman two where he gets rid of his superpowers and he goes into the bar? And then he's sitting at the bar and there's like this bully and he stands up to the bully, but the bully just beats the crap out of him because mm. he lost the superpowers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like you're natural now, right now. So <laughs> now you're, you're, you're like, you're working out yeah. and uh, you're hurting yourself. Like, uh, the fuck? On, a, on a natural note, so, <laughs> I, so awesome. I am kind of taking like, 
my own little notes because I think it, it could be useful for people that either have been on anabolics or came off or even want to know like what the difference is. Yeah. And, and so some of the things that I This can, would be a really good guide. Well, I'm telling you, some of the things that I, I, I'm noticing mm-hmm. myself, the biggest thing, obviously, you know, the strength isn't there. Uh, that's that's obvious, right? But probably the most uh, mentally challenging piece to it is the body isn't as responsive as it is when when I'm running anabolics, right? Or when my hormone levels are nice and mm-hmm. high, right? Mm-hmm. They like well, I'm I, I'm taking pictures every week and I'm doing what I would normally do if I was tracking for a show or anything, and I'm used to when I make changes like I, I make tweaks where I go okay this week I'm going to increase volume or I'm gonna drop calories or I'm gonna pick up steps or I'm gonna add some hit cardio so when I do that like I can go back and I can measure and I can mm-hmm. see like and typically when I make these changes I see pretty significant significant to me the average person would not be able to tell but I've been looking at myself like this objectively for a, a long time now and I'm pretty good at being able to see physical change when I make change to my program or whatever I'm doing. And it's just, it's way smaller and way harder to see. And so it takes like two weeks now yeah. where it's like before I could see like change every week. I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm mm-hmm. on pay. I'm on pay. So I'm moving the right well, direction. Everything's well, good. All joking aside, just totally serious and honest. You, your body has definitely changed a lot from where you were, like a couple months ago, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm talking dramatic. You look very, very different. So you've already made very substantial changes. And uh, actually, everybody's made some pretty good changes recently with this contest. It's funny, Jessica, she came in the other day because we did some videos and she hadn't seen you guys in like probably a couple weeks or a few weeks. And she leaves and she goes, Oh, Justin looks lean. I'm like, Yeah, he's going to. Doug's arms look bigger. I'm like, fucking everybody's got big arms. everybody's on point right again. now. Yeah, everybody yeah. seems to be making some good changes. But you've made the biggest changes. And I'm not talking about for the contest. I'm talking about before that because you went from where you were to where you are now. Bro, look, you look like a, a, a healthy, fit person when you know two or three months ago you could tell you were going through the shit. Oh yeah. No. So I it's didn't. a so you know, you shouldn't feel def- definitely don't feel bad. I know you don't, but I just want to say that. Yeah, I was coming when we did the, I mean, shit, that was when we did the measurement, I'd already been going for what, almost two months before that. You'd already made big changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd already made big changes. And the fact that it measured me at, that's the second I'd ever, that's the second worst I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. Like all the times that I've done my body fat test or or checked where I was at, the worst was when I did the whole fat to fit transformation a couple of years back or shit down. It's been five, six years Mm -hmm. back. But this is now the second worst. So I'm definitely coming from one of the worst places and arguably even more worse when you talk about the the hormonal issues and then yeah. the Achilles that I had to deal with. So, But I mean, I love stuff like that. I mean, I, we talk about this all the time. I know, that's just, why I think yeah. you're more dangerous now that yeah, your shoulder if life was, if life was easy, it'd be no fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, That's I, why I, when you told me your shoulder was hurting, I'm like, okay, well, I, I got to fucking stay on point because yeah. I know how dangerous you know guys like you can be <laughs> when you feel even more behind. You know what I mean? Even more of an underdog. Well, it, it, it forces you to tighten things up even more. So, like yeah. you see, this this is actually really common with athletes. Sometimes this will happen where they get an injury and they come back stronger yep, yep. Mm-hmm. because they you have to put the detail all, all the you have to put so much energy in all the little mm-hmm. little details of rehabbing and put, mm-hmm. making those right steps. And then it ends up, what ends up happening is they actually progress the right way. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, no, it can definitely it brings out the competitive spirit like nothing else. Oh, absolutely. For absolutely. Sure. Dude, I, I had to bring up like, it's, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever read what, like, ever. What is right. It? So you guys remember way back when we were talking about ghosts and like, oh, you're giving me all this shit about, you know, the, the existence of ghosts, apparitions, yeah. all this. I had stories about it. I had like firsthand experience. Well, this lady takes it to like, an insanely new level, right? So she claims, and she, I think it was like this article from New Zealand. She was talking about like actually having sex with ghosts and <laughs> wants to have a ghost baby. I <laughs> shit you not, <laughs> Doug. Can you please pull this up? That's <laughs> she wants to have a ghost baby. And I, so my speculation, okay. She's talking about having sex with ghosts. Like, I think she's trying to set up her friends and family because she's pregnant from some random. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, thank you. <laughs> like, you know it's the saying? neighbor coming in at it's night. It's a ghost you know baby. I mean? What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, we heard that story before. Oh, right. Yeah. Ghost <laughs> baby. Yeah. yeah. 
immaculate, you know, inception. Yeah. Or I want to know what. Where are you reading articles like this? I just, I just, I love, I love stuff that's just like so ridiculous. Can I just I say? Even, can I just I say? Can't it's even like help it. National Enquirer. Yeah. Do you, you subscribe? To oh, but it's true. It's the like, star, like, dude. Like, it's the star. That shit's always it someone is, that's it like, is like the National yeah. Enquirer. Wow. No. <laughs> no, this was an aftermath. This was on a, a reputable. Yeah, you know what this reminds me of? This is like those articles. Remember those uh, yeah. tabloids when we were kids? Like, you know, woman has wolf baby or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's a yeah. video and everything. She's you like know, on national news do you guys have? It. Do you guys have any family that like my grandmother like read every one of those national inquirers, dude. Like every Did time. She really? Oh, every time with the grocery I love store. Those. Yeah. She loved I used to read it. them in line. and all that. I, know, always, all over I always thought it was so fascinating that she read that. You know what's funny about the national inquirer? Um, although they have a, it was all bullshit. Every once in a while, they would drop some crazy real news. They were well, always the ones the, that you, dropped. You, the, you can count on them to get the like the shitty picture of you know you know Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise on the yeah. beach with his girlfriend and his gut. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, yeah. you could count on them to get some some dirt like yeah, that. That's, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Like you know, you always got to watch out for those like photographers. Did you see his... the one that was going around with Tom Brady? Everyone was giving him. No. Oh, you didn't see that? No. Oh, oh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, he looks kind of out of shape. Everybody jumped on that. Oh one. yeah, who everyone, cares? The bunch guy of haters for forty. Yeah, and he performs at a ridiculous level. Bunch I don't think he cares. Of haters. Yeah. Poor dude, you, dude. So you know what this reminds me of? This woman having sex with a ghost. So remember uh, uh, Ghostbusters? Yes. That, when that one scene where she goes down on the yeah, guy. yeah, what's his name? Uh, not, is it, it Bankman? Ray. Ray. It was Ray. Yeah, he's laying down and, the, and then the ghost pulls his pants down and gives him a blowjob. <laughs> yeah. So when I was a kid and watching that, I was going through puberty and I watched that shit and it really, I was like, oh man, this yeah. make me. And, <laughs> and, it, and it was. I just imagine it's some ghost. Bro, I literally had, like, I really was like, I had fantasies like, please, uh, I wish a ghost would come uh, into my room at night. Ghost, yeah. and, you're, you're on the Ouija board. Yeah, you're all like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, so you told me about this. Summon it. You told me about this lady. I'm like, oh shit, it happened? Yeah. Yeah, I wish yeah. that was me. She was even in the interview, she was describing, so the lady was like, like serious, like talking with her, like, like describe, you know, how, how does this go? How, what is the sex like? And all this stuff. And she's talking about it like, you know, it was light, light touches at first. Like, like you know, at first we were, I, I knew so, like a presence was there. And like, she was like going into great detail about how like, you know, it would touch her in places and all this stuff. And I'm like... That sounds that sounds boring. It's like a cat or something, like Bro, just brushing up against you. That's like when you're a kid and you tell your friends, "Oh, I have a girlfriend, but you know she lives in Canada." Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. This is just to the. <laughs> she's a model. Yeah, this yeah. is. <laughs> she's a traveling. Yeah, we're model. gonna have a ghost baby. Yeah. This yeah. is to the tenth degree. She's, she's thirty. Here's it. She's not married. She's thirty. She wishes she was in a relationship. Her friends are like, "Hey, what's going on?" She's like, "Well." Yeah. You know, I do have sex with a ghost. I gave up men for ghosts. Yeah, for they ghosts. Just, she's not bad looking. They make more sense. Yeah, she's not that unattractive. No, no, she looks like she could. She she's could, obviously crazy. <clears throat> you yeah, know what I, mean? I mean, like, come on, and, and why would? <laughs> I mean, this is like attention. Why do you want that kind of attention? I don't know. Uh, she just wants attention, general. Dude, I, I need to comment on you guys pa posted on your Insta stories a couple days ago your pic pictures of yourselves when you were kids. Oh yeah, Bro, I, I did see. Yeah, Adam did his too. I you was, guys were adorable. Oh, you see who else? That, what that's, the hell happened? That's Brett yeah, with us. That's Brett happened. with me too. Yeah. Bro, you were a cute ass little kid with your cheeks. Justin with the, the with the bee stung eye in the, oh, <laughs> the picture. Yeah, dude. You look like a rascal. Yeah, yeah. You look like yeah. a like a the kid that you're like. Oh, you gotta watch that kid. Yeah, I was kind of a rascal. Adorable kid. Adorable. Yeah. Adorable. And then Adam, I had my mom hunt that one out for me just because I was thinking I was like, "Hey, do you, we still have that picture somewhere?" Like so she cute. texted it to you me. Could, your boy looks just like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got just like you. And um, everybody says. And that. then Adam, you posted one with your dogs holding their hands or whatever. Oh, is that funny or what? <laughs> That's Katrina right. got that right. She now are they they're looking out the window? Because That's they're right. two boys, do they ever do they ever you know hook up? Is there ever a little little so little gay love going on? So they they're it's funny because because they don't got girls, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're yeah. neither one of them are neutered, so they both they both have their moments right where yeah. you could tell like they're they're horny right. They need some <laughs> need some and, bang times. And the, but what's funny though that they won't allow the other one to mount the other one. That, that, uh, that's exactly how they end they up. They both want to be the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're it's not be, a good match. Yeah, there's no like that, that's you part of like a stuffed animal. That's part of why they fight. Yeah, no, they have that. Like Bentley Bentley gets his bed and he like. Paws his bed, and <laughs> yeah. mounts it, and uh, goes Arlo to town. Arlo does the same thing. Yeah, he like, goes, puts it in his mouth and just yes, yeah, goes to town on yeah. it. 
Bro, you got to get him like a. Uh, he's got a pig. You got What do you mean? He's got a pig. What's a pig? Well, like, he has like his own. Yeah, pig. he's like a, a good sized stuffed. Pig. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. You, don't you? Aren't there other female that dogs that owners that'll say, "Here, let's let him." <laughs> I don't know, dude. I haven't knocked on any door saying, "Hey, do you mind my dog hey, fucks um, your dog?" Yeah. <laughs> just, just, Would you be open? Like, yeah, my dog. Doug, do you mind? Do you mind if Billy comes over and fucks Bella or what? Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> she's tiny. There should be a service, <laughs> like, a, like a dog prostitution uh, swipe right service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when my when I was a kid, my dad had a uh, <clears throat> we had a a pit bull, an Amstaff actually, which is a same it's same same difference. But anyway, big muscular, strong dog. It was a ninety pound pit bull, and then he had a friend who had a forty pound red nosed pit bull, and he wanted to breed them for puppies. So my dad's like, okay, like let's 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 do this. Yeah. That and let's videotape it. That dog was vicious. They she, he brought the forty pound pit bull. This my our dog's way bigger, and he kept trying to go near her, and she would growl at him. And then finally, he tried to mount her, and she just went at him. Yeah. And my dad was like, "It was the funniest thing to watch <laughs> him try to be nice." And her just push him away yeah. and push him away. She wasn't feeling it. Yeah, and then finally he just kind of held her down, you know. And then she yeah. kind of gave in. And and he, you know, he, as I, when I got older, he told me about this, and he's like, "It's funny because she wanted him to do that because then she was nice to him." So, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Putting yeah. up a front. Yeah, the boys won't put up. You'll see. They, Bentley will do the same thing. And Bentley will walk over and like kind of like lick Mozzie's ear mm. and kind of like, you can say like smell. Him. <laughs> like, and hey, Ma- man, I'm and you see try. like Mozzie kind of lets it happen a little bit like that, and then as Bentley starts to go around the backside of him. <laughs> Oh. He'll turn around and nip at him real fast, dude, so, and then they'll oh, get no, into no, it. They so. get into it a lot, man. That's hilarious. I've never had. I've had dogs. Like my, I've had dogs my yeah. whole life, and I've never had dogs that fight as much as these these two fight, man. They fight a. They fight a lot, man. Yeah. They really do. But it's, it's it's short lived. They don't like. They don't normally hurt each other. Like Bentley got his nose opened up the other day. That I told you guys yeah. that Katrina freaked out about. But. They're it's bred. They're bred for that kind of tenacity and. You know, they're, it's their bull breeds, right? Bully, all the bully breeds, they were bred for for that a little bit. And so what you'll get, especially the- Very protective, dude. Yeah, they bit yeah. my brother-in-law just the other day. Why? Yeah, so right during this whole process of us moving a lot, uh, Katrina's brother- you know, was, you know, coming over the house a lot and Everett was at the house and he's really like skeptical of like opening the door up. So like he'll look through the peak hole and like crack the door to see who it is. And he did that to my brother-in-law and the, anytime that someone bangs on the door, the boys go yeah, running down yeah. straight to the door right away and they're already standing at the door waiting and ever, it was like late at night and ever it cracked open the door and just like a like couple inches to see who it was. And Andy, her, my, her, my brother-in-law just, pushed the door open oh. and when he pushed the door open and he stepped in like and pushed Everett back and he was just playing with Everett like he was just like open the door and he yeah. like kicked open the door and Bentley jumped up and whack like bit him right on the hand right and Bentley doesn't uh, there he knows who he is but because he it came was, in it was, it was he's an intruder because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. he came in like that he, he nailed him good too dude dogs are amazing animals humans we would not be where we're at today without I know I think it's, I mean I felt bad yeah. for my brother-in-law but I think it's dope that they're they're like that you know what I'm saying that they're they're trained to protect like if I and when I was when they were little like I would pretend like I was like beating up on Katrina and then have them come like get me to get our, get mm-hmm. off of me you know mm-hmm. grab my leg and bite onto me and stuff like that so I've taught them like that if they anyone ever attacks any of us like for them to yeah. defend and they do you know pit bulls used to be called uh nanny nanny dogs that was a nickname for pit bulls back in the day oh like, really yeah so nanny I didn't know that. yeah pit bulls have a bad just make that up no that's true uh pit bulls have a bad rap now but back in the day they, the the, the like, nicknames like and names Poppins. that were called were, were, were <laughs> nanny dogs yankee dogs they were all american dogs in fact the the little rascals the old uh, TV oh, yeah. show with the kids with the ring around that uh, eye was that the one yeah. that that was a pit bull was and a pit bull. and see there you go for over a hundred years pit bulls were babysitters and it's because they are fiercely protective and they were also here's the thing about pit bulls that a lot of people don't know because they have a bad rap right they were bred to you know be protective and they were also bred to have dog aggression which is why you have to really socialize them well but they were bred to not have human aggression at all. And that's because in a dog fight, if any of them turn on a human, they lose the match right away. So they were always bred to be very, very good with people. And so it was a big dog that was like kids could, and people who own pit bulls and, and raise them right know your kid can jump on it, could pull on their ear, could bite their tail. Right. And they won't, they won't even flinch. It's like they're whatever. They're yeah. very, very good with kids. 
And back in the day, and then, you know, of course we had later on, you had, you know, drug dealers and shit like that who would buy them because they look so muscular and it just gave them a bad rap. Yeah. Yeah. But pit bulls and, and those bully breeds are, are, they're, if you, you know, they're active, so you got to make sure you're active with them. Not all of them, like bulldogs, not necessarily, but you got to be active with them. You got to train them. You have to be alpha because they are a very strong alpha type of dog. Yeah. But otherwise, they're they're an incredible dog. I had them. I've had them my whole life. Always yeah. had a pit bull. No, it's good, yeah, good, the, good, good breed. Yeah, the next dog I'll get will probably be another. I like the Staffordshire Terrier, the um, original English one. Have you guys seen those? Mm-mm. They're like they're small. They're like 30, 40 pounds. They look like a little tiny pit bull. And those are the original ones that were brought over from from England. Before. They look tough for a little dog. Yeah, they're just they're yeah, cute. They're, you know they're what cool I mean? Looking. Yeah, I enjoy them. Dude, I, I read an article. Um, I wanted to bring up to you guys. It's kind of cool. So more more studies are showing that what you eat affects your mood now there's the picture of the dog how cute are they huh oh, yeah. so i you know and this to me is a is a you know these are studies when they do these studies i always look at them and i go well duh but you know how the medical and scientific community are they need to see these placebo controlled you know large studies in order to confirm what the anecdote has been for a long time because you ask any parent does the way your kid eat affects their behavior any parent will say yes you ask any trainer does what you eat or what your clients eat affect their mood? They'll say yes. You'll ask people most of the time, so I feel better when I eat this way or not. But the scientific community has, has been lagging. But now we have studies showing that it does, and there's a whole new field of uh, of science called nutritional psychiatry. Nutritional psychiatry? Nutritional psychiatry, yes. Wow. So if you go in and- Somebody was telling me that the schooling now to become a psychiatrist, they they, they now include that. Wasn't it that Christina Rice? insanely yep. That was talking to us about this? Yep, yep, yep. Wow. Because yep. back, it wasn't it wasn't included, right? No, it, no. So this is a new- now, now all of them do, I think. This is a new burgeoning field uh, of medicine, and I think it's- Ooh, I like that word. Amazing. Burgeoning. Yeah, burgeoning. Yeah, is good. that a word? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, it's exploding, growing. Yeah. Mm. Burgeoning. Like yeah, burgeoning. Do you get like you have like one of those burgeoning calendars at your pants. house, like the word of the day, where you tear off every no, day? No, you know, and I know I come across as a as a pompous asshole sometimes, but I just this just comes out of my mouth like that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, look up burgeoning meaning. Make sure I'm <laughs> make sure I'm right there. I just, I, I, like I haven't yeah. heard that word in a sentence. Yeah, yeah increasing I mean, I like rapidly. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, like there was a study that showed from John Hopkins University that consumption of meats cured with nitrates can contribute to episodes of mania. So for people who are bipolar. Probably a good idea to avoid those kinds of foods. They also show, uh, there's also studies now showing that diets high in fruits, vegetables, proteins, and good fats, basically a low inflammation type diet, really works well on depression. And some studies show, and I dare I say cure depression, um, they're showing the effects now of food on ADHD in children, which we've all known for Mm -hmm. a long time. But this is now a medical, it's a Western medical field where they're going to study these things. It's about and, time, dude. I dude, know. We're lit- literally, we're five to ten years away from you go to the to the doctor and you say, I'm anxious, I'm depressed, you know, whatever, and they're going to say, instead of saying, okay, well, behavioral cognitive therapy and antidepressant, mm-hmm. they're going to say, well, let's talk about your diet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which is a conversation nobody's had in that situation no, forever. No, no. Now, here's the flip side of that. How do you think the food market's going to re- react when that becomes mainstream? Oh, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whole categories. Quality is going to be like sought after. Like there's going to be degrees of it right all over the place where people are going to like, you know, compete with that. I'm oh, sure. I think there's going to be whole products that are going to be gonna, like, that's what I'm for anxiety. That's what, that's what we'll do. hundred yeah. percent. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. I don't yeah. think it'll be like, I, don't, I think there'll be, let's make something that we can package and say, oh, this is for depression yeah. because it's, oh, I see. Like it's this, this, and this, right? Yeah. Therefore yeah. we can say it's, you know, our. They're going to have to word it differently because right, you can't right. make those, but I, I think so. Right. Right, like it'll be called like it, it will increase mood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mood increaser. Yeah. Sunny, yeah, sunny foods for a sunny mood. Sun- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it you know, will. Sh- it will though. That's some great- shit like yeah, that. Yeah, you're know? right. That's yeah, exactly what. That. Enjoy a relaxing <laughs> meal of you know. Yeah. <laughs> of whatever. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It can't just be like good foods that you pick up. It's got to be all packaged and it's, it, sold, just like supplements. Exactly. They're gonna try and capitalize on Speaking it. Speaking of and- supplements, I haven't had this yet. Justin, have you had the the four sigmatic the lemonade thing yet? I, had, I know no, I haven't I'm, had that. I'm one like yet. Mr. Anti the the four sigmatic. Oh, that's got flavor. activated charcoal in it. Does it taste? Now, can I just take that regular? I'm just drinking or the or coffee. Is it only for when you take activated ch- for? No, no, no. It's got activated charcoal in it. It's supposed to be good for. They'll say for detoxing the body. Yeah. 
activated charcoal's um, you know, when it comes if you have gut issues. No, anytime you or if you drink you, alcohol, you are the one that put me on right. that. Like you put me on the the charcoal like when we drink or when we, whenever now like if I eat something that I think is compromising, like okay, I know that my gut is not going to enjoy this like after like going down it's amazing, but later t- tonight or tomorrow I won't feel great. Like it's become a habit of mine where I'll just take a couple of charcoal and it makes a big difference. Huge difference. Yeah, I've I noticed a big difference. So are you saying that I could take this the four sigmatic lemonade thing right here? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Instead of the activated charcoal, and this is better because it has other ingredients. Yeah, it has, cha- it, yeah, it has chaga in it. Yeah, and so chaga and a, vitamin C. Yeah, chaga's got the adaptogenic properties, and mm. it's it's good for. I've noticed for anxiety and stuff like that. It's funny because the whole activated charcoal thing. Yeah, it's pr- pr- eight out of ten times. If Jessica drinks alcohol, literally eight out of ten times, she's going to be prepared to have a headache and a potential migraine. It's just, it's <coughs> I'm, just I'm what ends up happening. That. Like that's why I don't drink, dude. Do you just, really? Yeah, I just don't feel good off of she, it. So the last couple times we drank, and we went to when we were in Napa, we you know we did a lot of drinking because we're wine t- and it's wine. Wine will give you a headache more than uh, in my oh, experience. Yeah. It gives me a bad hangover. No headache. Two days. Two days of drinking. No headache because we did the activated charcoal. God, so it's crazy. Yeah. So no. Ever since you introduced it to me, it's been a, it's been something that if I'm going to, I mean, I drank well, I've drank more with you guys in the last year than I had in the previous yeah. like ten years, just because of that. Because every time I do, I'm like Fuck. Justin's influence. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is my one contribution. Yeah. You know what? How's that been going for you? Consider because that's a that was like a, a was regular. A big, yeah. It was a big you were deal. A, actually. Yeah, or are you still doing that? And not telling us under the radio? <laughs> yeah. No. I. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bit. You caught me. <laughs> you caught me. No, I'm um, actually not having any issues with it. I. For me, it's it's just. A, it was a pretty regular thing, like twice a week, maybe, like just because of like opportunities or like the lack of opportunities. Like, it, it was just a thing that like we'd we'd have a weekend or whatever, and we we're just like trying to like relax and chill, and so I'd have a couple yeah. drinks. But um, you don't you don't like see those patterns all the time. They how they creep up on you, and it was like it was creeping up almost like on a regular like weekly thing where I'd go like one to two days where I was like drinking. Uh, you know, and so, yeah, not, not drinking. I've definitely can attribute like a decent amount of my weight loss from just not drinking it. That stuff adds up like really quickly. So now is that affecting your sex life at all? Yeah. You know, it's we've, (laughs) I've, so Courtney's still drinking. She actually drinks this one, um, drink and, and has shifted from like, using like ginger beer and things that have more sugar in it to this drink called white claw, which is like, um, and I did try it. So I had a sip of it, but like, I, uh, I have to admit that, <laughs> but, um, it, it, it was good. It was like uh mineral water basically with infused flavor. And so it only had like three grams of sugar, two grams of sugar. Oh, is that like, like uh, what Taylor was drinking? Like those little wine can things type like yeah, that? But it's not wine. It's, it's vodka, but it's, it's like, like that though. But right? It's like that. Yeah. Gluten free, all that kind of stuff. But it was like in a tall boy, uh, can. And so, you know, and so, you know, so he's like, as long as she drinks, we're getting. We're as long sex. as she <laughs> doing that, and then you know, and then I might have a little edible here or there, or whatever. It's like that's that's kind of my recipe. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah really. it's not, a great it's a great product, dude, though. I'm actually like people. Uh, we're people not sponsored by trying him, to reach out. To here's them. the deal. Did you have Taylor, reach out to him. Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh you wow. do. Oh, interesting. Yeah. People, uh, people need to understand. Like when you have two people with kids, both work, and if their schedules are not the same, which oftentimes it's not. Like, just when you finally have a minute with each other, it's hard to fucking relax, dude. You know what I mean? It's hard to calm down for a second. I'll tell you what, we're to switch, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's and I don't think you know people don't realize like we're on we're like ships that pass in the night. Like like she when she's working on the weekend, sometimes I don't see her for like four or five days just because of like our schedules like mixing and she's mm-hmm. sleeping when you're up and yeah, going. Yeah, exactly. Versa. She comes home and I'm like already uh, asleep and doing you know so. For us to be able to like, yeah, wind down is really tough. Yeah, and it's it's that's the definition of a partnership. I think you know you you have a family together, and sometimes a partnership, just like in business, it's like okay, we got to put our heads down and and you know make this yeah, happen. Yeah, we're a team, man. Exactly, so. exactly. And you just remind yourself of that because it can be really difficult. Yeah. That's one of the bigger challenges in marriages. And you know, I I definitely didn't do it right in my marriage, one hundred percent. And you know, I'm not going to place any blame on anyone else. I know those two people. Uh, in every you know, in, in that formula, but I can say for myself, didn't do it right for sure, 
And that was definitely one of the contributing factors to the dissolution of that of that whole. Well, I can't imagine. I mean, I know how hard it is for Katrina and I just being two people that work a lot. You know, we just mm-hmm. work a lot, but mm-hmm. we're on similar schedules, and it still is it can be tough. Yeah. And it's not yeah. even because we're alone, right? We don't have kids running around, but it's tough to to switch the, your brain from work mode mm-hmm. to like let's have sex or let's be you know physical and and think like. And it's crazy. And I never thought I'd have as a twenty year old growing up. I just thought that was crazy. Like, I'll never be like that. I, all right, yeah, I want sex all the, all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, this I can't wait. And like, you know, my girl will live with me and we're going to have sex every day all the yeah. time. Like, no, it's like. Yeah, we'll catch ourselves just like enjoying, you know, conversation, then watching something and literally like passing out. Both of us were just asleep on each other. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, well. We'll it's, try tomorrow. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it can be a challenge for sure. But that's one of the, the you know, the, of course, on the other side of it, you know, if you if you op, if you do it right, navigate it right, boy, do you build a, an, an incredible bond. Well, this is why I, I mean I'm really big on the getting away for a day or two. Like even if it's just a day or two, where you guys take off somewhere, totally, and totally, and, and you don't have. That's what I was telling Justin. Mm-hmm. You ever want you, you ever need someone to watch your kids? You know, if, I know I'm in San Jose and you're up in in Santa Cruz. Bro, just let us know. First of all, Jessica is a well, wizard. She's a wizard with children. Literally yeah. no, a wizard. I've seen her. Yeah, she's yeah. great. Yeah. So if you ever want to, you know, take some take a break, let me know. Do you bring your boys over and we'll have a good time? No, See. I think it's important. Yeah. Man. I think it's important. Even if you get like even if it's just to like a hotel. That, Katrina and I love to do that. We'll just mm-hmm. drive three hours north or south and crash at some nice hotel and do the room service mm-hmm. thing and do a nice dinner together and spend spend two nights like that and it recharges me it gets us reconnected it, we have no distractions it's always awesome. yeah, and it's, but you do have your ireland trip coming up i do so. which i mean we're we're just getting like really excited just to have an adventure together it's like something that that's a big trip you yeah. know yeah we're, we're we're really gonna spend like as much quality time as possible and like reconnecting like trying to like every day to me i, I told her i'm like every day is a date you know and so mm-hmm. we got to treat it like that See, we'll see what happens. That's the kids awesome. are coming though with you, right? No. Oh, this is a no kids no, this trip. Is, this is for our anniversary. It's our ten year anniversary, dude. Yeah, it's my it's my ten year. I yeah, I knew that, but I didn't know that the kids weren't going. No, no. Who's no, watching the kids for two weeks? My parents, her parents, dude. So wow. they split the they're time. Gonna, they're gonna leave a couple big boxes of cereal. Kids will take care of themselves. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's how my mom would have done the, it. The yeah. dog's gonna watch them. You know, I got the nanny dog, so yeah, we're good. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, no, I'm excited, man. It's yeah, we haven't even even on our honeymoon, like we didn't, we only did like a week, you know, together. Like, so it was like this is a little bit more than a week. I mean, it's like ten days or something. So yeah, it's gonna be. It's going to be intense, man. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully we still like each other at the end. I know, Salna, we haven't even talked about who's going to replace him. Who we're Justin? Gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always do it, just you and I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you guys are funny. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys are entertaining. It's boring. Yeah, It'll yeah, be boring. We'll talk about macros. And it'll be fine. <laughs> by MAPS Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength, MAPS Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking quad. Eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Average Connor. How have Justin's kids' diets changed since switching to carnivore? Oh, yeah, that's a good hey. question, dude. Are you feeding them the same way? I'm feeding them a lot more meat, but they're not carnivore. So no, 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 no you don't do that I'm, I'm the extreme guy in the family. So uh, yeah, even my wife is kind of like, I mean, she's very, I guess you would say, like paleo. So. Are you, is everybody avoiding like grains and wheat and shit like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and even like leading up into this diet, like we were all as a family a lot more like gluten free and like grain free <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so the kids have actually been eating quite a lot more meat, which is great for me because like even in the morning, the tendency, even though we try our best to uh, you know have like eggs and bacon things like that available, it's like. You know, the quick fix is always carbs. It's always like something like some cereal. some shitty cereal or some, you know, whatever. But uh, just having like all the sexless meat around and then just warming it up and things like that. Like they're actually now I could see them craving meat, eating a lot more protein. And so that like 
to me, it like makes me feel really good. How big of a box are you getting from the butcher box then? It's huge. It's it's like the the biggest one you can get with all um, all the different types. I just did primarily the beef, um, you know, all the different beef cuts, and then and then bacon. Um, so I got in on that free bacon action. So if you didn't get in on that, you guys fucking missed out. Actually, you have a better one now where they're giving you free bacon and two free New York strips. Both. Oh, see? bing, bing, boom. They yeah. just, they just like to one up their game. Yeah. But dude, I love butcher box, man. And it's like, it's one of those things. It's such a staple part of like, especially dinners. And then like having extra meat as I cook, I'm just like outside barbecuing pretty much every day. Now here's a good question for you. Have you, since changing your kids' diets, because you guys went kind of gluten-free, grain-free, now they're eating more, you know, well-sourced, by the way. I think it's important to, to say that. It like, is, yeah. You, you don't just feed your kids more meat. Right. This is like grass-fed, you know, like good quality uh, meat. But anyway, now that they're eating more of that and less of the other stuff, have you noticed any changes in, in, in behavior, activity, like that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, especially in the morning. I think the morning time, it's like there's a window if... Uh, first of all, if, if we don't get up and, and get them outside or like get going, you know, in time, I, I'm sure you've experienced this. If you don't like get everybody like on point and out of the house, like it gets, becomes this like stir crazy energy. That's just like unmanageable. Um, but yeah, like their behavior in the morning is, is definitely improved substantially. And, um, I don't know if it's promoted, um, you know, my, especially my youngest, he's just like, he's so on one right now about like going down into the room and like doing all these like circus moves with the rings and like working out and no like, he's way. Down there. yeah, he's so motivated <laughs> right now. And it, it, all like, by himself. Yes. Oh, he'll go, so he's cool. like, dad, you know, let's work out. And so I, I can never say no, even though I'm like some mornings I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, yeah. like, uh, and so I just, I muster it, but then he'll go now on his own. He'll just go down there. He's like, Hey, I'm going downstairs. And I hear him. Cause like he's right underneath us. I could hear like all the uh, chains moving and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, that's so cool. It's, it's pretty rad. I just started uh, training my son here and there and, you know, because he's never worked out and he plays sports here and there, but you know, kids don't, they're just not as active naturally as they used to be. I mean, I, when I was a kid, your, your punishment was in the house, like stay home. Mm-hmm. Now the punishment is go outside, right? Get off your and electronics. Yeah, we. Were, I know we're hard on the kids a lot, but part of me doesn't blame them, right? Because as a kid, if I had the the cool shit that the kids have today, like oh, I probably would have struggled. Bro, I had TV, and I, I and that's what I did is watch TV. I couldn't imagine if I had the technology, right? I remember when we watched TV, it was like we and we've alluded to this before, where it's like, uh, you know, from. Three o'clock to five o'clock. There's your show, your half hour. Yeah, you have twenty four hour whatever. Yeah, there wasn't watch. twenty four. Hour, like the, the the Nickelodeon all day all night thing came around when I was an adult. That was mm-hmm. until later mm-hmm. on. Like that yeah, was that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. So it's you know, accessible there was always. A, yeah, there was a couple hours that you had a window of maybe you know, a handful of shows that you would even consider watching. Out of those handful of shows, maybe one or two you really yeah, liked. Yeah, yeah. Then the rest of the time, you'd rather be outside playing or playing board games or mm-hmm. doing some playing cards. Well, yeah. Or, so I, I started training him. You know, and we're doing like easy stuff i'm easing him into resistance training and we were at the park because i took him to the park and we did some body weight stuff and you know doing pull-ups and stuff like that and you know he's like he had this kind of funny look on his face and i'm like what's up dude tell me and he's like oh it's all right i don't want to tell you i'm like no tell me like what's what's going on and he's like why you know and he's kind of like having a tough time telling me and he's like why am i so skinny i'm like oh my heart you know because i was very (laughs) very insecure about that as a kid Uh, yeah and he's got my genes. He's going to be naturally. He's going to be a skinny kid, just like I, for, just like I am, right? And so, kind of. But then I, then I felt good because he feel he feels confident enough to At tell least to me. Ask, right? I would have never, right, right. Yeah. I would have never come out of my mouth. It was something I didn't want to say. So I told him, I'm like, listen, I'm like, you're first off because you're my son, so you're going to have my genes. He's like, but I eat so much. I'm like, well, and so I'm explaining to him how the body builds muscle and what it does. And you know you got to you put in the work and and you send the signal and then you feed your body and then it wants to build. So now he's you know now he's becoming a little more more motivated. He's still young. He's only thirteen. I think right around fifteen sixteen is when he may get really motivated, probably because of girls and stuff like that. But kind of cool. But anyway, this question is it's an interesting one because people. A lot of people want to change how their kids eat, mm-hmm. but not themselves. But, not themselves, but yeah. they don't realize that if you don't change how you eat, it's mm-hmm. gonna be it's gonna be vi- you're a uphill battle. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, well, I, okay. In my experience, I don't know if I've ever had a parent 
have success with that without changing theirs. Mm-hmm. I've had plenty of parents come to me and go, hey, they want their kid to get in shape, so they hire me to train them and get them in shape and then tell them to eat a certain way. But it's like, listen, if the whole family isn't doing that, there's no way your kid is going to do it. Yeah. How, it's first of, never successful. Yeah, and how do you explain it to a kid? Let's say, let's just pick, paint the picture for a second because this is a perfect storm for uh, you know bad relationships to food and potential eating disorders. Let's just paint the picture. You're at the dinner table. You have your your three kids, and then there's the one kid that you want to fix their diet because maybe they're overweight or whatever, right? Yeah. Everybody's eating this meal over here. This one kid or this other kid is eating this meal over here. Now, how do you explain that right. to your kid? That is not a good situation. Number one, it's a difficult way to navigate. You're isolating it. them. You're isolating them. It's a very difficult, you know, thing to navigate. And if you don't have to, I don't, I don't, I don't encourage it. And then on top of it. Children learn far more from watching what you do than they do from what you tell them. Oh yeah, and it, and and the thing about what's great about this question, like they they've been asking me why, you know, why am I eating just meat? Why why am I doing this? And like specifically, and you know, I've been able to get into some detail with this and like kind of tell them like what I'm what I've been going through this year with my health and what I'm really trying to address and and you know, kind of give them a, a, a more of a view of like my strategy with it. And it's, it's just a strategy. Like I've, I'm using food as medicine. I'm using it as a way to heal myself internally, just like I'm healing a, you know, some, some exterior, like a scar, like a, like a, like a cut or whatever. Like that's, that's like the level of what I'm trying to do with this. And then I'm going to incorporate more of you know healthy foods and vegetables and things that make me feel good and help me to perform at my best and so it's like that's sort of the message going now have, have either one of your boys seen you doing this because you've been doing it consistently now for a while have any of them been like oh i'm just gonna have a steak with dad today and just only ate a steak for dinner or something like that have they, have they jumped on board a yeah bit? well the, that's the thing some of them they, they'll get motivated because they think that all of a sudden, because I'm eating all this meat, like that's how I'm getting like big and buff. And so they start like <laughs> posing. They have like the little poses off and they're eating steak and posing against each other. <laughs> no, they're not. I die laughing. Dude, no, so I funny. swear to God, it's hilarious, dude. But um, yeah, they, but then they, they go back into their thing of like, like they want like, because they'll go to grandma and grandpa's or whatever and they'll, oh, you know, the worst, and they'll eat like, you know, hot dogs, pro- super processed, you know, hot dogs with like, you know, chips and, and soda and shit. And then, then I'm like starting over again. But, um, but yeah, no, there's those moments so that they, when they're with me and they're with, with Courtney and it's like, they, they see what we're doing and they, they kind of, they, they just watch us like, like intent, intentively. So, um, I just feel like as long as I'm, I'm doing my thing consistently, Courtney's doing her thing consistently, the kids respond and that's all we, we don't really have to say a lot about it. Have your parents ever, have they tried hiding or just like omitting information when it comes to food yet? Well, yeah. my parents did that last night. Yeah. Yeah. Last night. They, really? They, yeah, dude. They came back from the movies. They all went to the movies together and then, you know, dinner time and, and, you know, we had an amazing dinner. My dad's got a, like a full on, you know, vegetable garden in his backyard. So we had these green beans, these amazing green beans. We had this other salad. We had some other vegetables and, you know, we had some, just some steak and my mom made some turkey breast. It was like this huge dinner. So I'm like putting the food in front of my kids and my, my daughter's like two or three bites and she's like, I don't want any more. I'm full. And I try and there's this, I'm doing this thing now and I've been doing it for a while where if they don't want to eat, I don't force them because that's also not a good thing to do. Right. So I'm kind of looking at my daughter and I'm like, well, she didn't have breakfast. I know she had lunch because I called when they were eating lunch, but what else did she eat for? She not? So I looked at my parents and I'm like, so, uh, and I'm speaking in Sicilian to my parents. So my kids don't understand. I'm like, what do the kids eat at the movies? They're like, oh, it's, you know, not that much. I'm like, how much, how much popcorn do they have? Well, the, 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 the large, the super large one has a free refill. <laughs> so we did that one and I could tell they're kind of like, oh, they know what they're telling, you know? And I'm like, they ate a shit ton of popcorn, didn't they? My mom's yeah. like, well, it's their starch. That was their starch for today. Their so instead of eating their starch, today. and I'm just like, God. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, God. And then we get in these arguments, and my you know, my mom's like, well, no. that's my job. I'm the grandma. My job is to give this. Oh, God. Food. That's what, you know, some of Katrina's World. family talks like that. It's, oh, it's, as the uncle and the and the grandmother, I'm supposed to spoil yeah. the kids and do this. Like, no, no. Well, it's called gotta, spoil for I, a reason. I, I know. Dude, I got into I a little bit of a thing. I tell Katrina all the time, like, our kid will not go over there. That's the case. 
dude. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Yeah, because you need them to watch them. <laughs> That's the, so I got into it a little bit because I we took the kids to get to the dentist, and you know, like like my oldest had a cavity, and I'm like, well, how does he have a like? I've watched what's good, he's been consuming and like really limited his soda consumption and the, the dentist was hammering hard about all this stuff. Like, like, you know, eliminate the sugary foods and the sodas. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, you know? But, uh, then I'm like, Oh my God, you know, he's getting watched by the babysitter, by, you mm-hmm. know, my parents, by like Courtney's parents. And they, they use that as like a, a, a tool to like make him happy. Cause he, that, that he's so fixated on like having root beer and having like, like soda. That's his, that's his thing. He wants soda. And so, um, I felt good though. Cause I've, I've been able to kind of start, well, I'm like, well, you know, instead of just eliminating, just having water, you know, available, like I started to kind of bring in, uh, more like La- LaCroix and things like that that yeah. have like no sugar in them mm-hmm. and like and like trying to like describe like how y- you start to enjoy it because it's all like the mouth thing like it's the the bubbles it's the feel and then it's the aftertaste and all that kind of stuff it's not about like having it super sweet and so he started drinking it and now he actually requests that when he goes to my oh, parents God. so it's like you know little things like that it's like I don't want to like be the uh, the evil one, you know, all the time. Well, this is how I even use our sponsor Fit Aid. Like, this is how I drink it. I don't drink it because I'm like, oh, it has all these nutrients. And this can help me do this. And it's like, it's a a a fizzy drink that is got flavor to it yeah. that I actually can enjoy. It's a better option because I'm I'll drink cokes, dude. I mean, yeah. that's I've yeah, we all know I've, that. I've yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've openly talked about that on the show before. Like I when I just I like that that carbon, the sugar, and I'm, my body's been addicted to that sugar forever. So it's been a great replacement for me, you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I agree. Sure. Next question is from Chris DJ. How would you best explain the benefits of weight training to an old school martial artist who are stuck in the mentality that more is better and that only body weight exercises and long, slow running are how to train for fights? It's it's shock. It's surprising to me that there's still there's today still, yeah. martial artists that believe this, which is it's, it's silly. Now, I know why where this myth came from, and it comes from the inappropriately combining resistance training with martial arts or not doing it properly. Well, did, isn't isn't Bruce Lee famous for never doing anything but body weight? Nope. He did lift weights. No, he lift weights. No, oh, no. He Bruce did? Lee's famous for breaking for actually, that. Actually, yeah, being having like a bodybuilder physique. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, he he was at, he actually oh, worked. Oh, I thought, I didn't know he lifted weights. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Bruce oh, okay. Lee, the reason why, the, the amazing thing about Bruce Lee was he was... You know, he, he was, was like a, an early adopter of all. This. Not only that, but the martial arts community at that time, because you got to keep in mind, this was a long time yeah, ago. They right? shunned this, him. In the sixties. They shunned him because he was teaching white people, you know, Chinese, you know, ancient Chinese martial arts, which was you don't do that. You only teach Chinese people. Mm-hmm. So, in fact, he had he had a, a fight with uh, another martial artist over this. They actually had a fight uh, in person because they were the whole Chinese community or the martial arts community was shunning him for doing this. He also learned how to lift weights from bodybuilders. He also learned how to box from boxers. He learned mm-hmm. a little bit of wrestling. He, If you watch his footwork in his movies, mm-hmm. now a lot of the martial arts that he t- did in his movies <coughs> was for show, so that's not quite how he would fight, and he talked about that. But if you watch some of his fights, remember how Bruce Lee would bounce around and he'd do his footwork? Yeah. He learned that from boxers. That was not a- It looked like a boxer stance. Yeah, that was not a a kung fu or wing chun or anything like that. That was non-traditional. Yeah. And he talked about one of his famous quotes was to be like water, which is like formless. You put water in a cup, it it becomes a cup. Um, And water can crash or it can flow. And so he was a huge advocate for- trying all these different things. And Bruce Lee loved lifting weights, especially for his forearms, mm-hmm. um, for his abs. Um, and he liked doing uh, tension, tension with a lot of heavy weight. I, he f- I remember reading up quite a bit on that, especially. Yeah. just yep. He would go through like certain compound lifts, and then he would just squeeze his whole body yep. and radiate this tension. And he, if you, So if you look at his arms, he wasn't a big guy, but he was muscular for his size. His forearms were about the size of his, his upper arms. And because he, and he wrote about this, how strong forearms were crucial to being able to throw a stiff, hard punch, especially without uh, without gloves. And if you look at Bruce Lee in his early kung fu movies, 
like the Chinese connection and then you watch him later on like Enter the Dragon, Enter the Dragon yeah. totally different body yep. like he was totally different body he was ripped muscular he'd do that lat spread that famous lat spread and in fact Bruce Lee uh, inspired a generation of, of, of would be bodybuilders there was a lot of kids that started lifting weights because of Bruce Lee so so there's that but there's also it's, it's a myth and I know why it's a myth like if you're training in martial arts if you're you know training kung fu or taekwondo or jujitsu or whatever and then you go and lift weights and your goal with lifting weights is just to gain a bunch of size mm-hmm. and you cut way back on your martial arts training you lose you, skill you lose skill because your body changes right you lose a little bit of body awareness so let, let's say you're a 160 pound boxer and you're good you've been training for a long time if you just gain 10 pounds of size on your body it's going to throw your timing off a little oh. bit. It's going to throw your skill off. It's so all new variables now. You have to like catch the rest of your body and the mechanics up to you know account for. So yeah, that's it, right. So that's why it's so important. Like as you're training, to mm-hmm. make sure that you incorporate the skills training just as frequently as as the lifting. And so that that's where Bruce Lee sort of did lead the way mm-hmm. in terms of like showing people, yes, I can build my physique, but I can also maintain and exceed my skill now because I'm more powerful. By the way, this is this is true. For all sports, so yes. all sports, if you just go and bulk up and get big and and cut way down on your skills training or technique training, you're going to come back to your sport awkward just because you're bigger, Dude. stronger, and, and it's different. You have a different body. This is such a big uh, pervading myth that still exists. Like, you know, like, like baseball players don't want to build too big of shoulders and too big of arms or a chest that's going to get in the way, you know, of their, their speed. And it's just like, it's the same, the same thing applies to mm-hmm. like, you have to maintain the skills training simultaneously, or yes, it is something that you have to account for. Yeah, I would say ma- your skills training in any sport, I don't care what sport you do, yeah. including martial arts, is the priority of your training because skill is far more important than than strength and speed and whatever in a sport. And if you don't believe me, throw a you know top level strength athlete in any sport and watch them get their asses kicked because they don't have the skill, right? So you need to have uh, skill has got to be the priority, but then you need to have a good, solid foundation of strength training because of all the physical pursuits, right? Speed, agility, strength, has stamina. Most Strength is the foundation. Has the most carryover. That's it. You, if else. you get stronger, You're you'll have a little, more. A little bit of everything else. Everything. It yeah. just makes you a better person. Right. So find me a mixed martial arts today. Mixed martial arts today that doesn't lift weights at some like in some way. Yeah. You're not. You're, you're not going to find. You're going to get smoked because you know, because your competitor is going to be like lifting weights and and because that's part of it now. Like you have to account for that. Now yeah. that being said, this guy isn't wrong. Like the way he's training, it's yes. just if he were to incorporate some lifting, probably two to three times a that's week. That's it right there. That's it. You that's know? it. Just, that's that's what I used to recommend. Like everything too. he's doing is great. I think yeah. doing body weight exercises and exercising the way he is for his and doing a lot of skills training like he, like they said that he's doing. I think that's all great. But if you could incorporate mm-hmm. two to three days of traditional weightlifting, I think it would really benefit. Now, as far as the cardio, the long distance running, long running has some use in certain sports, but it's very specific to the sport. So, uh, you, wouldn't, you, it, w- wouldn't it be more applicable to do like? You know, to mimic whatever the rounds look like yep. or whatever sport you're doing. Yep, so, if yep. you're doing a, a sport that are two minute or three minute or five minute rounds, you should do bouts of intense cardio for two to three or five minutes, and then rest and then repeat. Right? Absolutely. Nothing. Nothing like for when I did jujitsu. Nothing gave me more endurance and stamina for jujitsu than doing more jujitsu. Yeah. yeah, like I I would run, I would hill, I do sprints, I do all stuff, and I get some you know benefit. But if I just did more jujitsu, I would get way more. Plus, you're practicing the skill too, so you're getting benefits from that. Yeah, and the way I would advise my my friends who did jujitsu with me what, when they wanted to lift weights, because a lot of them were afraid of this, right? They'd be like, "Oh, am I going to get muscle bound? Am I going to lose my technique?" I'd say just lift two days a week, focus on the core lifts, and just try use weights for what weights are good at, which is getting strong. Like here's another mistake a lot of martial artists do with weights is that they use the weights. To in, to in ways that weights aren't They're as gonna, beneficial for. Right, or they try and mimic actual moves of, of their skill or sport with weights, which I think is is another thing that I'm, I'm not like as as keen on, you know, kind of promoting. It's more like, let's have the skill be the skill. Let's have the, you know, the strength do what it does best. That's, I'm so glad you said that. There's this huge myth that if I take three-pound dumbbells or five-pound dumbbells and I shadow box, 
that it's going to make me a better boxer. Right. No, it's going to throw your timing off. Yeah, that's silly. It's yeah. going to throw your timing off because you're going to get good at boxing with yeah. <laughs> three pound weights. Yeah. Unless you put your gloves on, you know, that would make sense. Yeah. That's yeah, about it. Yeah. That's the weight that you want to box with. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so no, weighting yourself down and then doing techniques, uh, it'll just, your technique will form towards the new right. weight or whatever. So that's a, that's a huge myth. But you know, when it comes to, to lifting, here's the thing too, like, Weights are really – nothing builds strength better than weights, obviously. Can you build endurance and stamina and all that stuff with weights? Yes, but I don't think that weights are the best at those things. So if you're going to lift weights to contribute to your performance in martial arts and you're doing two days a week of weight training, which is a good amount of weight training for someone who's training a lot in martial arts, use the weights for strength. Don't, yeah. go, in the, don't go in the gym and do a shit ton of circuits. This is what I used to see a lot of guys doing. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, I need – you know, okay, I want to lift weights, but I still want endurance. So I'm just going to do a bunch of circuits with the weights. You're wasting the weights right. for that. Like mm -hmm. use them for what they're good at and get strong. And then if you want to build endurance and stuff, do the other stuff, you know? Yep. Next question is from Carmen Alessa. Do you think there are banned substances used by high achievers that aren't actually bad, but the government doesn't want normal people to use them? And achieve more as well. Ooh, yeah. Conspiracy to hold us back. Yeah. What do you oh, guys think about that? Absolutely. Talking about? Yeah. 100%, 100%, I believe, our most elite SEAL teams and and people like that are experimenting with some They're of this stuff. Absolutely. For sure. I actually think that's Dude, where they use methamphetamines and in, in, uh, fighter pilots. Stealing fire, too. man. They, they kind of tap yes, into that a yes. little bit. That's, and a great, that's a great book for you to read, both Rise of Superman and Stealing Fire a, around this. And they, Yeah, no, absolutely. I think they do. I think that's when, when it hits the market to us, where we start hearing about these SARMs and things like that, for sure, they've already, already been done. Yeah, yeah. they've already tested all that shit, and they figured out what's working. What's not. don't they use? Uh, don't the the SEAL team use the uh, what's the one that we talk about? Modafinil or whatever. Oh yeah, oh, no, yeah. Modafinil and all those wakefulness agents or whatever have been used yeah. by fighter pilots for a long time. Yeah. And these are ones that we're all aware of, right? Because they've now yeah. you know have surfaced and they're all over the web and so like that. But I absolutely think that we're always on the cutting edge and if there's anyone that's doing it it's for sure yeah. our most elite that are in that are fighting most it. most of the motivation for the government to ban substances most not all but most isn't because they're doing it for your own good okay that's the truth okay cuz here's the deal uh heroin illegal bad for you but we sell opiates like crazy which is legal heroin okay yeah. Yeah. you buy oxy you know uh, oxytocin you or uh, what's it called oxy uh, oxycontin oxycontin you buy you know uh, vicodins you buy you know percocets heroin in a pill right. okay and same thing with the adderall is just like methamphetamines so that's just right like, that's right can't you know? have meth but we can definitely prescribe adderall to kids yes it's <laughs> not it's it's a hundred most of the reason why they ban drugs is to i mean look if we go back to the, the when the real war on drugs started because we can go back further and talk about the conspiracy behind you know banning marijuana and all that stuff we've talked about that before but it was there was a counterculture in the 70s and 60s and 70s that was scaring the shit out of the you know out of the government they actually considered the counterculture to be a a threat to uh the the national the security national security yeah. Remember, at this time uh, people got to understand this too by the way i don't necessarily think that it's because people in government are evil although there are bad people in, in government just like there's bad people everywhere i think the government we were in a cold war we're in the middle of a cold war where you had two very powerful countries with nukes ready to launch, pointed at each other, and literally at the drop of a hat, the entire world would have been blown up with two completely opposing ideologies. Like you could not have those two ideologies literally, can ha they have a tough time coexisting, mainly because one of the ideologies considers, actually both of them consider each other kind of evil and they don't allow either one to exist because one, one ideology values liberty and the other one considers that you know oppressive or whatever and wants everybody to be the same. So they had these nukes pointed at each other and so the US government was like, look, we are in this very dangerous situation. We've almost gone to war a couple times. You had the, the, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis and mm -hmm. a couple other things. And so we had this, we spent a lot of money on the CIA and gave them all our money and said, look, identify domestic, you know, threats and let's try to neutralize them. And you had this counterculture, which was protesting like crazy. Uh, there were, there were domestic terror groups that were bombing, 
people, like the Weather Underground, which was one of them, um, that we know. And so you had all these anti-government, you know, terror, domestic terror groups. You had the counterculture. You had the hippies. Yeah. It was totally different from the 50s where it felt kind of wholesome. And now Meanwhile, all of a sudden, the CIA had autonomy. They, they still do, right? They, so, they have nobody watching over them. Yeah, and so the government's like, okay, how are we going to fight this danger, potentially dangerous counterculture that believes in all these things that you know are totally opposite to what we think is right or whatever. How are we going to throw them in jail when we have all these like freedom of to protest? Like we can't just throw these people in jail because our constitution protects them. It's going to be impossible. So they took the drugs that they used and made them extremely illegal and this is very clear. This is not a conspiracy. The government attacked the drugs in order to attack the counterculture and it was very effective. You have all these hippies protesting, throw the cops in there, everybody who's got weed on them throw them in jail. Everybody that's got acid on them, throw them on jail, in jail. Anybody's got mushrooms in them, throw them in jail. Heroin, throw them in jail because those are the drugs of choice for the counterculture. And then it was pushed by this propaganda that, you know, it's going to destroy society and, you know, whatever. And you can make arguments on either side, but that's where we're at today. Now we have this trillion dollar war on drugs that's destroyed communities, especially minority communities. It's thrown many innocent people in jail. It's, created this fatherless society in a lot of these communities um, and is, is, is fueled this very powerful black market, worldwide black, mar black market. America is easily the, the largest consumer of black market drugs in the world. And so for sure, it's, it's, it's not because they're trying to help anybody. Mm. It's, and, it's, and now it's a big monster. It's a monster with a lot of money. I mean, imagine if you, if you eliminated, if you changed the war on drugs or scaled it way back, how much money would police departments lose to fund, you know, their task force? How much money would the FBI lose to fund, you know, how, you know, it, it would be a, it would be interesting. It would be a, a, you get a lot of jobs that would be lost now because we'd end the, the war on drugs. And you've got all these other countries that, you know, that we force into this as well. It's funny because uh, Mexico has been talking about changing their war on drugs because, it's caused a lot of problems for them. Mm -hmm. U.S. government puts a lot of pressure on them and says, no, you can't. You got to maintain this war on drugs. We'll help fund it or whatever. So it's like they want to keep this fucking now, what thing do you, going. Now, what do you guys think in your personal experience and the people that you know that are high performers, right? Either super athletes or high performing CEOs. What do you think are some of the most popular drugs that you know personally like certain people are taking? Obviously, we won't railroad anybody and throw them, <laughs> or throw them on the bus here, but- like what, like what, like I know something I do, that oh, I've been ahead. surprised in the last, in just the last, you know, five years or so, uh, the amount of people that like microdose, uh, LSD. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. So that, that's a, a few. very, I think that's just a big thing now, right? Yeah. And I think it's really popular here where we're at in the Silicon Valley. I think that people that are plugging away on the computer and that are want to be like hyper focused all day long are seeing benefits from using that. Yeah. And I think people would be surprised on the what people are actually using that and taking that. That's one. Yeah, yeah. Adderall, of course. Adderall and Ritalin are the big, oh, big... One. I yeah. was going to say, yeah, like some form of speed, which I, I, I kind of consider those almost like a form of speed, right? Like it's a... Like I'm really like it's a stimulant that's going to keep me going and keep me productive. Like anything that's going to make them super productive like is very attractive if you're at the top of it's, your game. It's funny too because the studies will show that the methamphetamines don't... Uh, they don't make you smarter. They just make you... They trick you into thinking you like what you're doing, yeah. <laughs> so right. so you end up becoming more productive as a result. Because I, I think a lot of people, especially in tech, are sitting down and and just doing this monoton monotonous whatever, needing to focus. And that, I mean, you ever sit in front of a computer for longer than two hours? You know how that can, how painful that can be. So it makes it. The funny thing about this is, if they would just eat right and exercise, that would I blow know. away. Get like normal sleep. Yeah, that would <laughs> blow away all the other substances that they're using. But no, microdosing is a big one. Right yeah, now. I don't know if that would blow. I don't know if you could say that eating clean and so that would blow away Adderall and LSD, bro. I oh, mean, dude, just... take an unhealthy person, put them on an Adderall, take an unhealthy person and just change their diet and have them exercise right. Which one's going to see better performance all the way around? <sighs> That's tough, dude. Oh, you're, I, I 100%. you're talking about a, a, dr a fucking high, 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 powerful drug that you're taking in. That take Adderall every and day. I'm not, and I'm not denying. But I'm, but I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate sure. with you right now. I'm not denying that how amazing somebody feels when you take somebody on a shitty diet, depression, and sleeping terrible. And you, I mean, it's it is like a surge of you know natural cocaine you're mm -hmm. on all the time after doing that. Hundred percent, but. 
I mean, I've experienced Adderall. I've experienced a lot of these drugs, and I would consider myself a healthy person as far as how I take care of myself, exercise, stress, sleep, things like that. And pfft, those things are crazy, well, dude. He, well, crazy. they are. They are, but here's the difference. Adderall when you or Ritalin, when you first take it, you get these great effects. You keep taking it, and you start losing those effects. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. And side effects with, with fitness, with you know proper exercise and nutrition – you you may not get the acute effect right away, but it gets better and better and better and never stops. Yeah, it's that, more of a gradual that's, yes, slope. That's a, I mean, that's that, I agree with that. I mean, definitely agree with that, for yeah. sure. So I think it's, uh, you know, that's why I'm trying to, you know, that's what, basically what I'm trying to communicate. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be pro all these drugs and get everybody excited, but I'm just, I, th- this is being real. I but mean, they also do work. Is is I mean, they're, they're, they're very effective as far as like getting you, yeah. you know, to, to, to be super stimulated and be focused and all that. Like there's a part of that, but like you said, that will wear off you know then the doses will go up and up and up well, the, and the, yeah the challenge the effects is, will come afterwards all that shit yeah that's the cha- the challenge is to be able to to use things intermittently without uh getting addicted to that that feeling right of oh my god it was so mm-hmm. productive i'm gonna do that again oh my god so i'm gonna do that again oh i'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna do that again it, it is or if you're doing that with health and fitness yeah. like oh, yeah. oh i felt so good because i got a good night's rest and i ate well today you do it again like you're just going to continue to reap the benefits so i, I get where you're going yeah. with that angle like and i 100 percent agree yeah but if you're in like a pinch you know like okay today only right yeah right. of course yeah that's take not, a drug that's what i mean down. like that yeah. like you compare two people heads up who just ate good yesterday and then this person yeah. who's jacked no, up no, on no. adderall it's like you're not back in the no. day, it was Wall Street was all like cocaine, right? Yep. I mean that that was the deal. Yeah, I feel like I see less of cocaine, cocaine than I and used cigarettes because nicotine yeah. also will keep you up. In a now way. that's making a resurgence right now. It is these oh, vape, these little jewels and vape pens and all that. The, the in the nicot- in the snuff or whatever. Yeah, that's nicotine is making a comeback right now. Just, you know what's funny about nicotine is that nicotine by itself. You know, it's a highly addictive, but other than that, it doesn't really have all these, it doesn't have tons of negative uh, effects on the body. It might actually be protective against Alzheimer's. Uh, there's a couple studies that show that it might be, it's not uh, confirmed, but having it through tobacco, bad for you. Mm-hmm. Always bad for you. Well, and that's just because of all the other carcinogens that come with it, right? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's you're, the main You're going to give yourself cancer. I mean, it's, that's like the worst. It's funny, you know, I trained, um, there was about four vascular surgeons that I trained, right? They work on the vascular system, obviously. And I asked them, uh, you know, one day I was hanging out with all of them and I'm like, what's the one worst thing that you see that your patients do? And they all said, oh, 90% of our patients smoke or use tobacco in some form. And that's why they see us. It's, it fucks up the vascular system, like 90% of them, wow. like for sure. Wow. So that I told high? Yeah. They're like, wow. dude, they're like, oh, you go in with blood clots and problems with your veins, your arteries. Like, it's super problematic. Yeah, tobacco's t- t- terrible, man. Terrible. Your, your cancer risk factor goes. It's like the worst thing you could. It's the single worst thing you could do to yourself. Wow. Is is you, you know use those things. So it's amazing you, that we have that many people still smoking cigarettes like yeah. we do. I know. I remember asking them too. I'm like, so what's going to happen when everybody stops smoking? You're going to lose a lot of business. And they all laughed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was you know that, that was kind of funny. But yeah. but yeah, it's people are always looking for that. I guess that competitive edge or whatever. Um, we and, always will. Yeah. It's just humans, man. You know, it's, it's funny. nature. If you take all drugs, I had this conversation with um, a friend of mine who's like super into this kind of stuff. And, you know, he, he was telling me how you could take drugs and you can put them into two categories, ego boosting or ego dissolving. Mm. So he's like, look, you know, cocaine, alcohol, like those are ego boosting. Like you do a bunch of cocaine, you think you're the shit and you become more of an asshole. You give someone LSD or mushrooms, marijuana. Marijuana, they tend to have that ego dissolving effect. I thought it was an interesting way to, to put things. So I never heard it before, but it sounds like it makes sense. But I'm sure they could both do. No, I could see that. Anytime I've taken any of those, well, the, all the hippie drugs, you know, yeah. all the all the hippie drugs. Make Unless me you're feel, so enlightened over everybody else, it becomes ego. Right? You, that's what I was just gonna say. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Is then you become what the the uh, self righteous. You, you can make you, anything you need ego. To know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know. I was there. I'm uh, woke. Yeah, uh, yes. I, I was speaking to Jaguars. Next up is Miss Audrey Lynn. What are the most beneficial habits that you have implemented into your daily routine? Uh, uh, this is cool. You wanted this question, mm. though. I did. I think it's. I think these are these are like power. You know what I like too. I like that um, that I, I know your guys' answers and mine will be different than what the average person. I what I I can't stand hearing, and, and maybe this is just because I, I worked for a Marine boss forever. And he was just like, it was all about the the 5 a.m. routine and doing all this crazy shit when he first woke up. And I've just never been that guy. Like, I've just, 
I, no matter how many times I've tried or how many times I've had jobs where I wake up early in the morning, I've just never been somebody who has this great morning routine. And some and some of these guys will argue that the most successful people in the world have these crazy morning routines. And, you know, I, I, I can't debate it. Like, I'm sure there is a lot of guys that have and girls that have can killer morning routines that have you know, transcended into great success for them. But I've had a lot of success in my life and I fucking hate mornings. So yeah. I think there's other things in my life that have been impactful. Now, I'm thinking like health and fitness wise, like since we're we're talking health and fitness right now. So the big things that have been huge for me that I've started to do over my career, and I've mentioned this before on the show, one of those is getting in the habit of eating all of my like proteins and fats first. So instead of like being like, oh, I'm either on or off the diet or saying like, I can't have this. That's bad for me. Like, I don't do that. Like if I want something and I'm going to have it, like if I'm, we're out at a restaurant and I'm going through the menu and I'm like, oh, this, that plate, that dish sounds amazing. Like I'm not going to restrict, I'm going to do it. But what I will do is instead of indulging in all the bread that comes to the table right away or the chips and salsa that comes right away, like I'll pass on that. I'll enjoy my this meal that mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to. And then when I eat it, I'll eat it in a different order. So I'll normally go through all my vegetables, right? So if I have a salad or the greens, like I'll, I'll clear that first and then I'll move to the proteins and fats. And then the very last thing that I'll indulge in is the carbohydrates or the starches. And that served me really well because by the time I normally get to the starch, I rarely finish it all the way because the way we, the way most places serve, like we, the portion size that we get is ridiculous. And they and, serve reverse, you know, yeah, starch first. And- right. So if, if I can discipline myself just to eat in an order, and, that, and that's saying too, if the bread's on the table, I can still have it. Like if for some reason I was so hungry because I was so deprived calorie wise that I eat my whole plate and then go to the bread, then so be it. Like, and my body probably can handle it because I've had that, I've been depleted so much that it's not going to do a lot of damage. It's where it gets in, tr- we get you in trouble is when you start off with all the bread and the butter and the chips and the crackers and all that mm-hmm. shit first, and then you eat the carb while you're also, and then you and then you look at your plate and you end up leaving some of the most nutrient dense foods and the stuff that's most beneficial for your body on the plate still, and you just over consume. So that's been a huge uh, thing. That's a simple little thing that I've been able to do that I think has been able to mitigate the amount of excess weight that I've ever put on my body as I've aged. The other one that's been a huge game changer for me, and we, I really started this with Katrina when her and I first started dating, and I, especially when we were going through competing and it was important that I kept my steps and things like that up, is just learning to uh, move after I eat. It's I, 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 When I really started to look into like my eating habits, uh, I, for sure I was notorious for eating in front of the TV or eating and then wanting to lay down and relax or watch a movie and just be sedentary after it because you just had a big meal. Oh, I feel good. And then now I want to relax mm-hmm. and chill. And instead of doing that, getting up and actually going for, and I, the great part about it is I don't put the pressure of, Oh, I got to go burn this off. It's not like that, which I, I think that's a bad relationship that some people have where they eat and they're like, Oh, I got to go exercise mm-hmm. off. No, it's just, I'm going to go for a stroll. I'm going to go walk for 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how I'm feeling. If her and I are in great conversation and we're connecting with each other and the walk is nice and it's beautiful, we'll walk for an hour sometimes. But I make it a habit to at least make it like a 20 minute stroll right after I consume. And I instantly feel the difference. Like Mm -hmm. just the way I can feel my food get digested better. I feel like I burn off some. I mean, obviously you burn off some of it because you're walking and you're moving. So you're burning calories. Those two things are, are habits that I have definitely started to do as I've gotten older, and I've seen a uh, I've seen it help me out a yeah. lot well, as far as maintaining my health. Well, gravity is a part of digestion, uh, obviously, because everything. That's why that's why your 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 anus is at the bottom of your body, and your mouth is at the top of your body. That's why we evolved that way because gravity helps Most digestion. Most, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, and then it's when gotta you, go down the chute. And then when you're walking, you know the muscles that activate your your legs and your hips, or many of them actually move in and around or on top of your uh, d- d- your digestive system and they actually help like massage mas- yeah massage the process they right? do in fact if you have a like an inflamed appendix one of the tests that they'll do on you to see if it's your appendix is they'll activate your psoas muscle and if it hurts then they know because it sits right there where the appendix is so no that's a that's a great one walking's a, a very very good one. it's funny because rituals are such important things for uh, successful people all have 
rituals, and it's because it, it creates space. You know, it's like if you ritualize something, yeah, because time is so valuable. You you remember it. You do it a particular way. You don't need to have that that space occupied in your mind. You have that space now for hard work or creative type things. Um, so you know that's real important for me. I, the two, I, I'd say, most important, consistent daily things that I do that are in my routine is working out in the morning. Uh, it's harder to work out in the morning. I definitely don't have as much energy or fire. Uh, to get going. However, doing it in the morning makes me super much easier to be consistent. And when I'm done, I feel ready uh, for the day. I just feel good and I feel ready for the day. And so I really value that that first thing in the morning workout. And then the second thing is, you know, Jessica and I, most nights, not every night, but most nights when the kids go to bed or even if we don't have the kids, we have this room set up in our in our house that has two chairs you know, it's on this nice, you know, fluffy carpet or whatever. We have books in front of us and what we, you know, we have this like stand in between us and we'll turn all the lights off or down and we'll have tea and we'll sit there and either very quietly not talk or many times just have nice conversation at the end of the evening. This was her, this was something that she brought to the relationship. She really said, oh, I, I don't like to just go to bed. I like to, to wind down and have a nice conversation with you. And now that I've done it consistently, great I really have it. Great habit. Yeah, it's a great habit. You go to bed, you sleep nicely, you get to kind of reconnect, even if it's for ten, you know, minutes or thirty minutes. Um, it's something now that I I start to value um, as part of my my daily routine. It's like the end cap to to my day. Yeah, I think you know since coming home, like I remember listening to Jordan Peterson and what he talked about as far as like your energy is that you bring. Um, back home to your family and um, to your significant other. Uh, I really took that to heart even more. So these days and like, you know, the past few months have been really working on how I enter a room and how um, I, I really present myself and whether or not I'm like super exhausted or like super overwhelmed with things going on or, um, you know, like I just want to make sure that I'm bringing that energy in and then it changes the dynamic of, cause there's a lot of chaos in my family. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have, a, I have a puppy that's running around biting shit and eating stuff. And, you know, kids kind of, you know, inevitably at the end of the day, sometimes they'll get at each other. And so I just come in, uh, and make sure that, uh, like I'm coming in with good energy and I'm getting everybody outside the house. I usually take everybody out immediately for a hike or a walk and uh, just to kind of set set a better tone and then we all kind of reconnect and then we come back. This usually takes only like uh, 30 minutes. Sometimes we'll go for like an hour and like we'll let, we'll let them really expend a lot of energy. And then it's like uh, there's this sort of a process where I've been able to then if I have anything extra I need to work on, I'll go into my office and I'll turn on Brain FM, which... I swear to God, like if I didn't know what I did before Brain FM, but like I put focus on and I, it really helps me to use that time specifically and wisely. So it helps me to really block out a lot of uh, other chatter and noise and everything else going on. Meanwhile, the kids like have now learned to sort of play um, and let me kind of do my thing. And then the dog's gotten enough energy out to where he's manageable. And uh, I mean, there's just all these little these little parts of the process, like for me, I've never been a morning person. So like Adam, um, what I've found really helpful is to set up my day like beforehand, before bed. So I set everything. I mean, my clothes, like everything is ready to go. Like I, I, you know, if I'm bringing like food, you know, to work, like that's all in the refrigerator, like my coffee, like a lot of times now I brew my coffee ahead of time. And then like uh, I drink iced coffee anyway. So then I'll put it in the fridge and so I just don't have to think about it. And, um, that, that's been really helpful. Cause then I'm like, I'm waking up and it, it helps me to, to, to meet the day better and like have a better attitude and, and, and driving over to work. I just listen to podcasts or like audio books and I get fed, uh, information, which, you know, is, has been really helpful too. So are you guys doing the cold, cold rinses every day at the end of your shower? Oh, I haven't been. I haven't done that in a while. I, yeah. So I've done it consistently for a long time now, and uh, it's it's such a great part of my routine. At the end of every shower, I do 
be about 30 seconds of just, you know, as cold as it gets. You know what? During the, I was really, really good about the funny part because this would be the easier time when it's hot. But I actually, because I know it's more beneficial for me during the winter time, like to make sure I'm, I'm mm-hmm. doing the hot, cold contrast because just because the colds and things like that that are going around. So I was really good this last winter of being very consistent with that. That's something that I haven't been consistent with. And then Justin mentioned something that maybe one of the, we, we brought up not long ago, like the sponsors that we use most and Brain FM isn't a sponsor, but they are a partner of ours. And man, they, I probably have used their stuff more than anything else, more than any supplement or anything that we, what we've ever done before. I mean, that, that for focus sessions, I think I, that I use that one the least, but I still use it. I still definitely use the focus stuff, but man, to settle me down at night, if I'm, oh yeah, like we talk about, you got, you talk about you winding down with your girl. Mm-hmm. Like those are all ideal, like for me too, because I'm the same way, like Trina and I like to, but in real life, there's certain times where you know, she just had an, a, she had an event at seven o'clock at night. She didn't get home till like 10. I'm doing work all the way to like 10. And so we're both buzzing and that's like, okay, we're the normal routine of winding down. Isn't there like, it's kind of a great way to, to hijack that, right. Or to, to use that as a crutch in those moments where I can go turn that on. It works. Oh man, it works, dude. Yeah. That thing works so damn well. And yeah. it works even on the, cause they, they recommend it in your ears, which I think is the best way mm-hmm. if you have, you know, uh, noise cancellation, uh, headphones, but we put it even on our Bose speaker right next to the bed oh, and yeah. it it works for both of them. I wish it worked through the Sonos, like through Wi Fi, but I haven't figured that out yet. But oh, yeah, really? Yeah, I've done I've done it just um yeah, like like hardwired hooked up to a speaker, mm. but yeah. Mm, excellent. Well, if you want to use Brain FM, go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump and uh we set up a, lo- a lifelong kind of promo. It's twenty percent off, so yeah. it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Also, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can get any of our guides for free. The newest one that's up is a guide on how to help yourself if you have chronic back pain. So again, that's mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>